If you love watercolor or you want to learn about watercolor, this is the perfect day for you. Our guest is Michael Holter. Michael, what are you going to do for us today? Hey, Eric, uh, good to see you again. I am going to uh, just do a portion of uh, a portrait the way I do my portraits. is, is Everybody does these things a little differently, but I'm just going to work on the eye. I'm going to give a simple uh, exercise that I usually work on in my workshops, and I'll, I'll show how that works. And, and uh, you know, the eye is the kind of the gateway to the soul. So we're going to try to capture the feeling of an eye in a very quick watercolor. Yeah, that way. <laughs> a little scary there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, we'll be right back with you in a second. Our guest today is Michael Holter, and you will be blown away by his work. Obviously, one of the great watercolorists of our time, and he's going to show you a little bit about how he does an eye today, but he does incredible portraits and, of course, incredible landscapes, and you can learn more about him as we go. Our prize today is an easel brush clip, and that means that if you make a comment in the comments section, you are eligible to win a prize. We're gonna pick randomly no matter where in the world you are, and uh, we will ship it anywhere in the world. We prefer that you say where you're from, just so we know, that'd be nice. Uh, so why don't we get this thing rolling and we'll, uh, we'll continue on. It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. We, we have a gift for you, and that is uh, 101 watercolor painting tips, tricks, te techniques, and uh, it's on video. And you can get it streaming or on DVD. If you want DVD, uh, if you'll pay the shipping, that'd be great. But if you want it, just click online. We'll get it for you, too. Just go to watercolorlive.com slash 101 tips. That's Watercolor Live slash 101 tips. Also, if you would like to subscribe to this program, we try to be here daily at noon, but some days we don't make it. Uh, during COVID, we were here uh, seven months, seven days a week, and then we cut it down to five days a week for the rest of the year. And now we're kind of getting back to business. So it's harder to get it done every day, but we're trying. Uh, anyway, if you'd like to subscribe to this, you can follow us on YouTube at Streamline Art. Or you can follow me, Eric Rhodes, on Instagram <clears throat> and Facebook. And so that would be really terrific. Just go ahead and do that. Uh, the last winner, the last show, a uh, winner of a subscription to Plen Air Magazine, which is a fabulous publication, G.V. Meyer in Chicago, Illinois. So congratulations to G.V. All right. I should also mention our guest today has uh, some fabulous videos from Streamline Art and Creative Catalyst. Watercolor from photos is a great one. Uh, you see a lot of different approaches on that, a couple different demos. This one is called Seven Steps to Watercolor Landscapes. And then again, a couple of different demos. And then this one is called Seven Steps to Watercolor Portraits with Michael Holter. And we're gonna learn about portraits today. So let's get right to our guest, Michael Holter. Michael, welcome back. Hey, it's good to be here. Okay, so you're going to paint for us. Let's do some eyeballs. Well, I'm going to start, if you don't mind. I'm going to just show you. You you showed a couple of the images, but I wanted to just um, mention a couple things about the way the eyes are done. Um, and you can see that uh, on this character here, um, there are uh, very interesting uh, features. Um, the eyes are... are um, a, a kind of unique set, and the uh, you know eyebrows are very limited in, in their... The way I painted them, keep things fairly simple. Uh, here's a lady with uh, dark brown eyes and glasses, a little simpler forms. A lot of times, it's a lot. Of, it's about uh, just keeping things as simple as you can. This this painting is called "Smoke It's in Your Eyes." So the one on the left is kind of clouded over into the smoky area. Yeah, he's and, a tough uh, hombre. And this guy here, another nice really uh, really sharp eyes looking at you and uh, this is the eye I'm going to do today from this painting called the veil has been torn uh, this was done a, a while back but it's uh, it's that eye so we'll uh, we'll jump over to uh, to where I am gonna paint this is the um, sketch that I've got 
So and, uh, can, um, you, can you give I, a, a point or two about painting the architecture of an eye? <clears throat> In other words, the shape, you know, because our tendency is want to make it a walnut. I'm, I'm sorry. Say that again. I missed it. I said, would you kind of talk about the shape of an eye? Because we all have this tendency to make it a walnut shape. Yeah, well, I, I was going to mention that the, the the big thing you've got to think about, and I'm not a, a I'm not a great student of anatomy, but if you think about the eye, is is first of all, it's a it's a it's an orb in here somewhere, is that orb <clears throat> that it, that makes up the whole eye, and you're just seeing this sliver of it, and so you've got shadows and and different uh, things that are going to happen around the edges that are important. Um, and you've got to be able to recognize those little subtleties when you're doing a portrait. And that's the point I'm going to try to get to on this today is just to show um, the way I can uh, capture an eye uh, simply and <clears throat> kind of rapidly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, usually um, this is just the, the way the drawing would start. And by this point on, in, a, in, a, in any painting of a, of a person, I would have put some color on this. So it doesn't matter what color it is or how much of it there is. You just need a, a value on the skin. So I'm just going to put some color on here. Isn't that fun? It is just fun. throw some color on. And uh, don't worry about the white of the eye because it's not white. Um, we, we think of the white of the eye as white, but it's not. Uh, there's always some tone to it. So I usually just throw in some color. Uh, on the skin tone. Well, I shouldn't say throw it in. I, I, I purposely paint it in, but right now I'm just going to place some color on there for the sake of this demonstration. Um, so when I um, do this, that just takes care of the whites that I had on the paper. And with watercolor, you want to preserve the luminosity of the, of the watercolor against that white paper, but you don't need to um, have the... Um, uh, all you know the white showing necessarily and when you're working on the subtleties in the face uh, a lot of times the white is kind of overwhelming to the eye and uh, to your eye and you are um, having to adjust things too much so you want your uh, values to get, get get kind of toned down a little bit when you're working on a portrait so this is uh this is dry enough now I hope that dryer didn't hurt sound too loud. I, I got a real quiet one that helps uh, keep it from being too noisy. I, I was impressed by how little it made noise. Yeah, it's a little uh, it's a little heat gun, basically, is what it is, instead of the big fan of a hair dryer. Anyway, the next step on uh, when I do these, and, and all of this is outlined in my, in my Seven Steps to Watercolor Portraits uh, DVD, by the way, available from Creative Catalyst. Um, the first thing I do after I have um, um, uh, done the uh, underlying color on the on the uh, on the paper is I put in the shadows. Now over on the rest of the face, there's shadows, but around the eye, there aren't too many. There's just a little bit of shadow here and there. For instance, there is a little shadow coming off there, and there's some shadow areas up in here. And it comes down. There's a little shadow in, in this spot right here. And there's this area of shadow underneath here. This is the shadow on the skin tones is what I'm really looking for here at this moment. Now, there are other subtle shadow areas that we're going to do as we get a little further into it. But uh, And then I'll, I'll take the tip of the brush, a little damp brush, and uh, subtly remove some of the paint, uh, do some soft edges so we have some lost and found edges. And we don't want to have a whole bunch of um, just uh, blocky shapes always. We want to try to be making this whole thing a little bit softer. So basically, that's our that's really the shadows there. I can I could do more into the eye, but that's our shadow. So that would be the that would be the second step in my whole process is put shadows on all parts of the face and, and so on. But there is, like I say, there isn't much on this particular eye. So the next step, after drying that a little bit, I come in and I start doing uh, the detail phase of the painting. And the detail phase means that I'm going to do um, uh, the eyes, nose, and mouth first. Uh, I want to get that 
uh, positioned well so that the um, uh, so that you can really get a, a sense of the whole face as you get into it. And um, what I do, I'm going to make her eyes um, into a uh, sort of a brown eye. I think that's, that's kind of what they are, brown or hazel. And when I do that, I use quinacridone gold as a base for the whole, whole um, iris. I apply it uh, fairly thickly and... Uh, Give it a chance to sit for a little bit and I can go right over the pupil and all that but that's my base now if I was doing a um, um, a blue eye I would I would do a base of um, a, a blue maybe a, a light phthalo blue which is nice staining color and will sit down real good I don't have phthalo on my palette so I often use this cobalt teal which is not a staining blue but it is the right uh, the right color for an under underpainting of a blue eye. So I'm just going to lift some of this uh, pigment off here to get a little variety into this shape of this, of the color going through this iris. Um, so it looks a little bit like there's some value range going on there. Maybe a little more pigment over here. Just to give it a little variety, the light comes through the eye. That's the beautiful part about eyes. They're, they're, they're uh, transparent in nature. Um, light can come through them and give you all kinds of really nice, nice effects. Um, and it's fun, to, it's fun to paint those things into the situation. I have another camera here that will show a little closer version. Now that, um, a little too close maybe. Um, now, uh, the next step on a brown eye is to take a, a brown, and I usually use a burnt sienna and uh, darken it with some ultramarine blue. And I want a pretty thick mixture here. Uh, you can see it on the palette there. I'm trying to get it pretty thick, um, not, not quite right out of the tube, but not much moisture in it. And what I do with that is I take and apply it to the edges of the of the uh, iris both sides just a little bit of a, a band of the darkness that is there on eyes almost everybody's eyes have a have a dark edge to them and then of course there's a dark area where the pupil is now I can't really tell on the photo where the pupil is exactly so I will um, I'm putting it approximately right there, and I don't know exactly how big it is. Now, it's fairly sunny, so I'm sure it's quite small. Now, as this sits there and uh, starts to settle in and, and, and really become, becomes a little bit more dry, um, I'll begin to lift this inside edge, clean my brush out, and lift with clean brush, not much water, Keep washing out that brush, get all that pigment out of there. And I just want to be able to make this uh, a gradation here from the dark exterior outside of the eye edge where I that I put down down to a lighter value as it goes toward the inside. Same thing on the other side. Uh, this side here is drying a little bit more, but it's going to be up in the shadows up there, even if it, even so. So the thing about um, doing these um, figures the way I do them, this is the way I, I do it. Not everybody would do it the same way, but this is what I do. And uh, I do it on a, on a hot press, a 300 pound hot press paper. This is a Arches, uh, very heavy and smooth paper. And what that helps me with is when the, uh, when you have this um, uh, smoothness of the paper, you can get the details in the eyes. That's the one reason why I like using it. Uh, if it wasn't for, but if the eyes aren't real important, uh, I, I don't need to necessarily use this paper, but I really like to, I like to have uh, have this control. I guess this is about the one time when I do like control. I'm usually pretty pretty loose and uh, impressionistic with my work, but this is the 
the one time where a little control is nice. Now there's these little features that uh, happen in the eye, little radiating things that come out and little, you know, you can play around with that and add some of that here and there. And I can come in and darken some of that uh, other stuff a little later too. Now I'm gonna take some more of the burnt sienna uh, maybe make it a little more red, add a little of uh, 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 some cad red, um, cad red medium hue. Let's make a deeper red. And um, I'm going to add some of these features around the eye now. For instance, there's this uh, line up here that kind of comes up into there. There's also the eyelash area. I'm, I don't really get into painting the eyelashes too much um, unless it's really, really a vital part of a person's um, uh, look. And uh, so I try to avoid getting too carried away into the details of little things like eyelashes. So this little part right here uh, is now, you know, kind of starting to frame the eye a little bit. But again, I need to soften edges can't leave all these as just a, a little band of, uh, of watercolor uh, color there. It needs to show a little variation. When the light hits it, it's going uh, to be light areas. and going to be dark areas. It's going to have some broken areas. This area right down in here has a nice little bit of shadow where, um, where there's this shape of the eye here. Just make that like that. This shadow goes up into here. Um, this is all pretty dark down in this area. I can just sort of bring some of these areas together. And there's there's warm tones down in, into this part of the eye. There's warm tones over here in this part of the eye. Um, so now, um, once you have some of that in place, you don't have everything there yet, but some of it's there. Let's put a little bit of tone on this, on the eyeball. The eyeball has a, a bit of a curve to it, of course, and it's got some pinkish nature to it. There's blood vessels and, and tone in here. And I can put some of that in right in, right into this corner. Make sure that this edge is not a hard edge right here. So I like to think of this as kind of a little tiny mini abstract painting that uh, helps me to, to just look at the, the painting and what's going on and not be concerned too much with, hey, this is, this is an eye, I've got to make it a certain way. But if I just enjoy painting and enjoy the treatment, um, uh, it works out pretty, pretty well usually. Um, I'm going to jump up to the eye, the eyebrows. The eyebrow is a um, interesting um, little portion here because I, uh, the way I do them, I do not do um, do them with a lot of uh, attention to the to the little hairs and all the little details. I'm looking at the shape. Her eyebrow has a lot of light hitting it, and I'm using some raw sienna, and um, that's my uh, my main uh, light color in here, and I'm using some sepia, just some some uh, you know dark brownish sepia, and I'm mixing that in here a little bit. Now that doesn't look too uh, realistic when you look at it that way, but if you take now and start to uh, soften and manipulate this a little bit, take off some of these hard edges. And again, I'm not trying to uh, uh, paint the perfect eyebrow here. I'm looking for uh, an interesting shape, an interesting form. My wife Cindy is standing right here. She usually has to she usually has to trim my eyebrows because they're a little bit out of whack sometimes. The older you get, the wilder your hairs grow on your eyebrows. So. Thank you, Cindy. 
<laughs> so anyway, this is the beginning. I can go in here and uh, add some more texture, some more color, um, some more to it later. But you notice that there's also this area right down here where the, there's the value of this eyebrow kind of connects right into this, this shadow shape here. So I can just add some, some more of this. Uh, Scarlet Lake is the red that I've been using in here. Just kind of build that right into that, and let it bleed right in. The thing about watercolors, you get this wonderful opportunity for things to make these beautiful gradations. It's a natural, a natural part of the watercolor, uh, 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 the way the way watercolor works is that gradation. Gradation being one of the uh, principles of design. And with watercolor, you get wonderful gradations very, very simply. Now there's a little bit of tone here on this side of this, her face right here. Goes right down to a little uh, dark spot right about there. There's a little bit of a dark spot right there. These are just shadows. And then this gets a little darker in here just trying to find the find the areas where um where the values uh, go darker and just try to try to work within a, a range of values uh, that will work in here now this is very thin so it dries lighter so that's why I, I sort of keep on adding a little bit of value here and there another layer of, of color because as this dries it, it, it really settles down let me dry this again. So um, now that the, the um, since I'm only doing um, just the eye right now, you, you don't have a chance to to compare it with other parts of the of the face. Uh, you're just able to to kind of see. Uh, what's going on with this one area, but you, when you're working on a on a portrait, you, you tend to want to work in a large uh, large area, large um, you work on the whole face and the whole body, and um, our whole figure, and you try to uh, capture it um, and, and re build relationships between the values as you go. Now there's a bit of a muscle shape that gives form to this part of the face over here. So a little curve, a little gradation there. And scrub that a little bit and get that softer. Um, there's also a little bit, I'm going to go into a little bit of violet right now. Kind of change the colors a little bit here. There's a little violet right into this portion of the of the face right in here. The eye comes down in there. And there's a a bit of a um, light catching the the, 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 the lid there. Uh, the lower lid gets gets some light on it. There's also a little violet down in here. Comes down here. So all these areas are um, areas that uh, have slight, slight, subtle changes in the value and they need to be built up and worked until you get the right feel for the eye. Now, um, one of the things that is really important that I need to do before I run out of time here, there is a, um, a on this eye, there, the light is coming from the left side over here, and there is a shadow coming down off of the eyelid. There's a little drop shadow that needs to be there to make that eye sit in the socket properly. And I'm just going to take some um, ultramarine blue 
I'm just going to put a little, little line like that, just a little cast that shadow right over that eye. Now that may look a little crazy blue to you there on the screen. Let me dry that. And as that dries, that'll settle down in and that'll become uh, the um, a little bit more of the um, uh, shadow, like I said, off the eye, and it'll it'll fill, fit right in there, and it'll give that eye some depth. How much time do we have left, Eric? Maybe he fell asleep. <laughs> I guess he did. Uh, so there's other other colors and values in here, different places. Um, I like putting the violets in there. I like putting other colors into my eye. I like putting a little bit of, uh, this is a quinacridone, I mean a cadmium orange. Um, there's sometimes there, there's some colors that pop into an eye, picking up or light coming off something else. And a little orange uh, kind of sets things off. In, a, in this area. Um, and I think we need a little more, a little more tone down in the eye here. There's a little more value in there. And We'll go, um, there's a little bit of red in that corner there um, that kind of got lost with that blue. I'll put a little more red in there, a little more red in here. Um, there's color, there's color dancing around in, in this area of the eye that's really fun to capture. A little more color right in here. I'll use that same red, keep some color harmony. This area of the face down here is pretty pale. I think this needs a little, a little more value, just to, just to make so it makes sense. Sometimes some some areas have need to have just a touch of value to them. Side of the nose, and then the part of the cheek down here gets kind of rosy red. So even a, a little bit of the alizarin colors down in this cheek area. And this is, of course, an exercise and a study, so not everything's going to be finished off here. There's definitely some tones up in here. Little soft edges. Um, need a little more, I think, a little more dark into the, this part of the eyebrow here. Pull that up a little darker, drop in. Again, not every hair is getting painted, just the shape. Um, <clears throat> the, um, I think the, the brown of the eye just kind of needs a little more punch here. And the pupil. Now her eyelashes are, she has eyelashes there, but I didn't... Um, I chose to not really do much with them, but let's say we say we want to do a little eyelash. We just use that same dark value. And it's a little darker up in here, so let's just put that right in there, make that value a little stronger. Okay, we're getting there. How about um, we do this? There are some lashes down here I'm not going to do. I might put a little more value there. And um, so when I get into the final stages of my um, figures, I'm often putting in warmer 
brighter tones in some areas, like the orange, where the where the light would hit something. Um, oftentimes, I'm going to use a little turquoise, a little cobalt teal here, in a cool area, like right in here, maybe up in here. Just kind of give it a little sparkle. Um, and that same thing happens in other parts of the of the of the face. It might even happen. I might even try to put a little bit into the shadow area under in the eye here. Let's put a little. I'll need a little more on my brush. Cobalt teal is fairly opaque, so it'll sit on top here. Put a little color in there. I think the whole tone of the eye is a little too light. Let me. Darken that a little bit, I think. I want to make sure my colors <clears throat> that I have on there now are good and dry. And uh, the main thing at the end here is to make sure that. Um, you really bring this eye, this eye to life with a little bit of uh, light. Since I've painted in watercolor, of course, you paint, uh, you try to uh, uh, paint in the, uh, um, uh, you paint the, 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 keep the lights of the paper and all of that. You try to do that as much as you can. But when you get to the point where um, <clears throat> you have, um, uh, this this finished you're almost done somehow you've got to get some light back into this area perhaps and this eye needs a little sparkle of light so let's just um that's really kind of dark there now i'm going to pull some of this down into the rest of the eye i'm looking at the screen and it seemed like it got a little too dark some areas and not dark enough in others. I think an overall tone of, of value is better here. So let's um, let's dry that. So the last uh, part of this, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tool. Uh, actually, it's a uh, razor blade tool you could use an exacto knife whatever you want to use but i want to bring a little bit of life back into this eye usually there's going to be a little catch light that's going to bounce some light off an eye it doesn't always show and it isn't there isn't one on this photograph but i know where it's going to be uh, it's going to be somewhere on the side where the light is is coming from uh, and i'm going to put it right about here and i'm going to take this exacto knife And just scratch that back to um, to the paper, and um, that gives me a nice little sparkle to the eye that uh, uh, helps it to kind of come to life a little bit more. Probably could use a little more yellow. in this eye. The Conecodone gold was the base, but there's got to be a little more, a little more color in it. Now there's, I've kind of usually don't do as much manipulating of these little colors in the, in the iris. Usually they set, they kind of settle down pretty quickly. Um, and it really depends on what you want to accomplish with it, how much you want to yeah, you know, add to the to the to the image. The image you have in, in a photograph is, is one thing, but you have to make this into your painting, and um, you want your your figure to have um, life in it. So you want the eyes to really come to life. So that's about it, Eric.
I'm not hearing you. Are you there? I see you. you yeah, I don't hear you. You want me to close the show? <laughs> How about now? There you go. Oh my goodness, too many buttons. I've done that. <laughs> I think I'm I'm so totally brain dead after four days of Realism Live. I probably just should be not be doing this today. That's what I'm guessing. All right. Well, why don't you come back on camera so we can see your beautiful smiling face? Uh, let me uh, let me do that. Yeah. There we are. Ha. Ah, great. Well, uh, nice job today. I want to tell everybody that Michael uh, probably has some online teaching that he does and workshops. You doing any uh, workshops anywhere soon in person? Yes, uh, it's really picked up again. I've, uh, after the first of the year, I'll be in California, then I'll, and I'll be in Annapolis or Alexandria, Virginia. I'm going to be in uh, Oregon in the spring for their Watercolor Society. I'll be, uh, yeah, they're all over the country. No place international, unfortunately. I was supposed to be going to the UK, but that kind of fell apart. So yeah, well, it might be best to wait. Um, well, uh, I'm sure that's all on your website. I should mention that Michael's got a great video, seven steps to watercolor portraits. This will be the complete, not just the eyeballs also has a fabulous video called seven steps to watercolor landscapes, fabulous landscape painter, as you can see here. And of course, watercolor from photos his most recent one and, uh, tells you how to make you know, photos lie to us. So it shows how to make a photo actually look good in the painting. And there's a couple demos in there. Well, Michael, thank you for being a part of this today. Your eye was terrific. You do great eyes. The eyes have it. The eyes have it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Eric. See All you right. soon. Our, our guest today is Michael Holter. And I should mention to you that uh, we have an event coming up called Watercolor Live. We just finished another event, uh, which was Realism Live. Watercolor Live is going to be the 27th through 29th of January. And today is the last day that you can get the discount price, the early bird price. It goes up at midnight tonight. And uh, it's a great bargain. And by the way, I mean, people, people on Realism Live last week, which was four days, were saying things to us like, you know, this is an incredible bargain. Even if I paid twice or three times the price, it's an incredible bargain. Uh, we're doing it again with Watercolor Live. And of course, Michael Holter will be teaching among some of the greatest watercolor artists on earth. I can't mention them all, but you can go to the website. But I'll mention a couple of them. Uh, Michael Holter, of course, uh, Alvaro Cassinet from Australia, Thomas W. Schaller, Jan Selmanin, and so many, many others. And uh, they're just an incredible lineup of styles and approaches. You know, you can find people who are doing bright and colorful, uh, loose and expressive. Uh, you're going to be finding portraits and landscapes and, and flowers and cityscapes and just a number of different things. And, and so we want you to join us for Watercolor Live. It is actually the largest art conference in the world. Last year, it was the largest. This year, we're expecting about three times as many people. There's almost, almost uh, signed up the number of people who came last year already. And uh, we're just beginning on this. So you want to make sure that you become a part of this because you really learn from the very best. And it's an opportunity to uh, see a lot of different approaches and styles. And of course, we have a beginner's day. And so that's a, a terrific thing too, because beginner's day is really a refresher for those of you who don't know from the beginning. And uh, we've got some people on there. Michael, I think was on beginner's day last year. Uh, let's see here. Michael, were you on beginner's day last year? I've lost your audio. Now now I'm the one with no audio. No, I just turned my mic off because I didn't want to be overheard, in, you know, the background. But anyway, yeah, yeah. I was. Here's the, by the way, here's the uh, nice. finished thing. Looks nice. a little different when it's not right on the camera, close up. Yeah, that's I beautiful. Can... Great. Thank you. Do you have any, uh, any thoughts about Watercolor Live uh, now that you've been on the faculty and you've experienced it? Well, um, I, I, I thought it was phenomenal. I was on the beginner's day, which was a, a great. I mean, there's no, I mean, there was some stuff there that was anybody can learn from. It was great stuff. 
and uh, was able then to to kind of observe uh, the whole show. I mean, every day and uh, some of the great great uh, people and some great uh, you know teaching and uh, it, it it it's a lot of fun for for those of us who are uh, wanting to learn more about watercolor. It's about one of the best ways you can do it. Best uh, bargains that you can find, I'd say so. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Michael. We'll see you soon. All right. All right. Again, again, our guest today was Michael Holter. I'm Eric Rhodes, uh, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine. And I got to tell you, we had a great time last week. Uh, Wednesday, we had Beginner's Day for Realism Live. And then uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And they were, they were long days. I mean, they were like 12-hour days. We just want to pack it with information. Then we do a cocktail party, paint along at the end of every day you have a chance to interact with and ask specific questions of the faculty members. And uh, we worked it hard. Everybody, uh, one woman, actually two different people on the, on the uh, cocktail party, uh, two different nights said something similar. One woman said, you know, I, I want, I want to tell my husband about the day. And she said, and I broke out in tears. Uh, she said, I was just so joyful and so elated. And I learned so much more than I thought I would. And, and that's the that's the response we love to get, you know, is is that we want to help you. And you know, we uh, we don't have a national U.S. watercolor conference. There are lots of watercolor conferences by state. You know, Florida has a big one, and so on. And maybe we'll do one one day. But this is a chance to bring in uh, people from around the world uh, to teach and also to attend. And uh, you become a part of something really big and historic. And so we'd love for you to be a part of it. And it's coming up in January. And even if you're working, you know, you can take the weekend off or you can take a day off or maybe you can't take it off at all. But there are replays with every ticket and different ticket prices have different lengths of replays all the way up to VIP where you can get a bunch of other goodies as well. So uh, check it out. At least go and look at the faculty. It's uh, watercolorlive.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you to all of the people who were at Realism Live last uh, last week? Uh, Why, well, you know, I I thought I would sleep all day on Sunday, but I got up, got went, went to church, had a great day, went to my studio, I'm working on color charts. I was like energized, and so it's really terrific. I want to thank the Dreamliners as well. Yay, Dreamliners! Dreamliners is a group that has founded themselves because of this broadcast, so that they could stay in touch in the event it ever ended, which it never did. And so they stay in touch. There's about 20, 2,600 members. You can be a member by seeking it out on Facebook. It's Dreamline Artists. And I have nothing to do with it. I just, I'm telling you about it. Okay, you guys, thanks. I'll be here again, I think on Wednesday. Got some uh, checkups, doctor appointment, teeth cleaning, all that kind of stuff I got to get caught up on. And uh, so I, I'm not going to be here tomorrow, but I'll be here on Wednesday and we'll have another great. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to leave a comment or a message because we've got an easel brush clip as our prize. And certainly don't forget to subscribe. You can subscribe to this on YouTube. So you get it every day at 12 noon Eastern or what, whenever you want to get it. And then, of course, if you'll follow me on Instagram at Eric Rhodes or on Facebook at Eric Rhodes would be really helpful. So thank you. Uh, make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button. That way you get them live when they come in on YouTube and just search Streamline Art video there. Thank you guys, have a terrific day, and uh, we will see you on the other side. Bye-bye.